drugs, guns, counterfeit cash, it's all for sale on the so-called dark web, a secret and sinister part of the internet that is flourishing despite a massive crackdown. All right, the dark web, the subject of an historic trial that begins next month here in New York City. And tonight in the Fox Doc, our Ben Simino is taking us inside the case. This is about the future of our internet freedom. So there are actually terrorist groups that are calling for electronic jihad. This is a man's life and his liberty. First, some semantics. The dark web. What is it? It's a part of the internet that cannot be accessed through search engines like Google. It's hidden on purpose. You need a special web browser to access it, and it's designed to be used anonymously. No tracing. But this year, the light shined very harshly on the dark web. A high-profile criminal case is set to go to trial in Manhattan next month. At the center of that case is a dark website called Silk Road. This man certainly does not look like a worldwide menace, an internet mobster. We know that Ross is the friend who always shows up. But the U.S. government says he is behind one of the largest drug and crime rings in history. Ross, who is the most peaceful, nonviolent, positive, compassionate person I've ever met. Ross Ulbricht was arrested last fall on charges of running Silk Road, a dark website akin to Amazon or eBay, with buyers, sellers, user and product reviews, except the product in Silk Road's case is usually drugs. More Molly, heroin stamp bags, liquid mushrooms. Ross Ulbricht's family began a legal defense fund at the website freeross.org, which is filled with images like these. The friend you call when your car breaks down or when you need help moving or when you just need help. After Ulbricht's arrest, Silk Road was shut down, but now somebody has launched a new version and we are taking you on it. These sellers, I mean, 880 reviews, these are not novices for one gram of ultra clean cocaine. People did studies on the Silk Road and found that the customer satisfaction level was remarkably high. Greg Virgin's day job is running Redjack, a company that keeps businesses and government agencies safe from hackers. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm starting up a Tor browser bundle. Okay. Which is the. Uh, the gateway. But we asked him to use his knowledge to take us inside the dark web. To access it, we used the free Tor browser. And Tor stands for? The Onion Router. So it is a network of servers that relay your traffic across one another. So nobody can figure out who you are, where you are. Our first stop, Greg took us to this site, what's essentially a dark web directory. Without listings like these, the sites would be impossible to access unless we knew the exact addresses. People have estimated that more than 70% of the activity in the dark net is, is illegal. A lot of that illegal activity revolves around money, fake money in some cases. Here they have clearly currency, euros for sale, uh, PayPal accounts for sale, credit cards, cloned credit cards with PIN codes. I don't know what trusted vendor means. One ad offered corporate account numbers for sale. Another showed off stacks of counterfeit 20s. Ten bills cost 80 bucks, and users offered advice on how to spend it. I finally ordered 10 bills and found a way of spending them at nightclubs. I just asked random drunks for change. 100% success rate. On almost every site, it was easy to find ads for electronics, new unlocked iPhone 6s for sale here, and plenty offered fake passports and IDs. To establish a new Islamic front both in the United States and around the world. This site seeks donations to recruit jihadists in the U.S., and murder does seem to be big business on the dark web. One site seeks to crowdfund assassinations. This website says it's easy to obtain high-powered firearms. On one line, talking about high-powered tactical rifles, and the next line, cocaine and marijuana. Of course, there are no questions asked, no pesky background checks, and the currency, as with most things on the dark web, is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a virtual currency that uh, obscures the, the, the people doing the transaction, so the buyer and the seller. You can, it's a piece of code that's shared between two parties to replace currency. Anyone can buy Bitcoin, but it's not cheap. One Bitcoin is about 300 bucks, although it's been as high as $1,000.
And then there is what Greg Virgin says is most disturbing about the dark web. There are a number of atrocious child exploitation sites. In his spare time, Greg Virgin works with the International Justice Mission to find and rescue children being sold on the dark web as sexual slaves. Because of your work with child exploitation, do you expect anybody to be arrested? In the very near future, yes. And you found victims? Yes, so we believe we found dozens of victims that there, there's, there's a strong possibility for rescue. Imagine from a law enforcement perspective the challenge in identifying people who've never gotten together physically, who live in five separate countries. Sean Henry spent 15 years leading cyber investigations around the world for the FBI before retiring as an executive assistant director. He says the dark web is a nightmare for law enforcement. It's also the source of all the high profile hacks we've seen this past year. Target, Home Depot, Chase, Neiman Marcus broken into, even the U.S. government database holding personal information for employees with sensitive security clearance. Can you protect the network from being breached? That's out the window now. We need to change the paradigm here, and it needs to be how soon after an adversary makes access before we detect them. His biggest fear? Hackers working through the dark web's anonymity, going after power plants and financial systems cyber terrorism. So there are actually terrorist groups that are calling for electronic jihad. What if the lights go out for a week, two weeks, a month? How do we handle that as a nation? Companies That's a possibility. need to have, absolutely. So where did this come from? Well, it might be hard to believe, but Tor, the software which makes most of what you've just seen possible, makes this anonymous and so hard to track, was actually created by the United States Navy. Part of the goal was to help people in oppressed nations have internet freedom. So the dark web is not all bad. For us in America, we live in a free society for the most part, uh, but there's plenty of people in the world who don't, who live in oppressive regimes where they control the internet. Whether it's pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong or the Arab Spring, the dark web's anonymity helps make it possible, letting organizers spread the word. This case is the future of our internet freedom. Which brings us back to Silk Road and the criminal case pending against Ross Ulbricht. Julia Toriansky is a blogger from Toronto. She believes internet freedom in the U.S. rests on the outcome of the Silk Road case. If Ross Silberg is convicted, then anybody who uses Tor networks or anonymous systems will be uh, considered a criminal by default. Toriansky is a supporter of Ulbricht's mother, Lynn, who says the U.S. government is trying to rewrite law. If convicted, God forbid, Ross will be the first alleged website host to be convicted for the for the actions of users on a site. Lynn Albrecht has traveled the country to raise awareness about the Silk Road case and has become something of an internet star. She would not agree to an interview with us, but we caught her speech at Liberty Fest in Brooklyn. She believes the outcome of the case could lead to a world where everyone's activities on the web are monitored. Of course, Edward Snowden showed us last year the NSA is already collecting information about phone calls and emails. And it's something far more dangerous than any website could ever be. And that is what our government has become and how they operate. As for the dark web's dark side, Toriansky says it is worth living with. Most people are inherently good, and just because a small percentage of people may or may not commit a crime, we shouldn't police everybody. And if we do, that's not a world anybody wants to live in. Ross Ulbricht has pleaded not guilty to all charges. His trial is set to begin November 10th. No matter the outcome for him, as you've just seen, the dark web seems to continue defying law enforcement despite their pledge to crack down. I'm Ben Simino, Fox 5 News. Well, Albrecht's lawyer and the U.S. attorneys prosecuting the case have declined to comment on this particular story. If Albrecht is convicted of the most serious of the most serious charge, he faces a maximum sentence of life in prison.